Hello everyone, Eric Marks with FindingMiddleEarth.com and today I'm going to do a video topic based on a question or a series of questions that I've received from a few different YouTube viewers over the past few months. Uh, sometimes when I want to dig into a good video topic I'll just kind of skim over some questions that I've been asked and it normally gives me a pretty good idea to make a video. So this is one I've been asked uh, a few times in the past couple months or different versions of this question. And I thought it might make uh, a few people curious, even if you didn't even know that you wanted to know this question. Uh, it's, it's a pretty interesting one. So the question is basically, uh, after you post-process a photo and after you, you know, seal the deal, it's done, it's back in Lightroom, you export it to a JPEG, you have it on your portfolio, you post it on social media, after it's out there, right? It's, is it okay? Is it considered a sin or is it considered bad practice to then go back and make changes to that photo? If maybe a week later you realize, mm, I don't really like how much contrast I added or I don't really like how colorful it is or maybe I should have made it a black and white. All these things might come up and you might want to make changes to it. Uh, so there, there are the, the photographers that like to place themselves and other people in a box of rules. Um, that's definitely not me. I've always been kind of a, a rogue person that likes to just kind of carve his own path in life. And uh, sometimes that has led me down awesome roads and sometimes it's gotten me into interesting situations. But I've always been that kind of person. I like just no rules, just, you know, carve my own way of doing things. So uh, I say that that's perfectly fine. Um, I think that if, if you want to make changes to a photo afterwards, uh, you know, more power to you. But I will give you a few tips and some advice on how you can avoid situations like uh, having the exact same photo on social media and on your portfolio, but the one in your portfolio keeps changing because you keep making, you know, uh, changes to it. So before you ever post it on social media and before it hits your portfolio, there are some things you can do, which, which I do. Um, a lot of people... A lot of other photographers, even my friends that I know, they'll go uh, on location, they'll take the photo, they'll be so excited about it that they'll come home and they will immediately process the photo and they're even, even more excited about it once they process, then they go ahead and post it on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, they get it for sale on their print store, on their portfolio, it's just like it's, it's hit everywhere within the same day. And that's great that, that people are that excited about their work, you know, that, that's fun, there's no, there's no problem with that. But uh, typically the way the mind works, especially if you're a creative person, I think that creative people are inherently bad at making up their mind. Um, and that is something I find across a lot of creative people. We're, we're really bad, typically, at just making one decision and sticking with it. Like when it comes to cameras, right? Gosh, I mean, our, our photographer is not the worst decision makers in the entire world. Go to YouTube and just type in camera switch or camera brand switch. It's 100,000 videos on Canon to Nikon, Nikon to Fuji, Fuji to Sony, Sony back to Nikon. We're the most indecisive people in the world. Uh, so because of that, um, it's probably not the best idea to go take the photo, come home, process it, and then boom, it's out there for the world to see. Uh, what I do is, when I'm on location, I'm always kind of subconsciously premeditating some kind of idea uh, of what I want it to look like. And that's fine. That's a good thing to do because you're there in person. You're kind of taking everything in. You're taking in the moment. You know, the colors are great. Maybe the, the, you're taking the smells. You're just creating a memory of this scene. And a lot of that can play part to how you, you know, creatively post-process the image. It's great. Because um, you're there in person. You can see how colorful it is if the sky really is as pink as it should be or You know, maybe the colors are a little more subdued and they're kind of pastel colors and All that kind of goes into how you process it, but sometimes when I'm out in the field I get kind of too much of a, a Premeditated idea of what I want it to look like that I never try to process it on the exact same day I'll normally wait a day or two before I even look at the images so that I can kind of come back and look at it with a, a, a fresh mind and fresh set of eyes and I don't have too many ideas that are just sitting back there because uh, the creative process, post-processing and photo editing, the whole thing, it, it should be just that. It should be creative. Uh, it shouldn't be 100% premeditated and like just within these guidelines. You can kind of do whatever you want. It's just kind of up to you and your style. So because of that, um, it's good to just kind of let it, let the image sit, you know, put it on your computer, let it sit couple days and then come back and revisit it. Um, that's one of the things I do. And then once I edit it, by the way, I spend anywhere from, I don't know, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes maybe per photo. Most of the time it's about 30 minutes. 
Uh, and then certain photos, if it's some big panorama, maybe it'll take an hour, but some people spend two or three hours. Um, and even if it's just 30 minutes or 40 minutes or whatever, you're still sitting at that computer screen, looking, straining your eyes for that long, going through different shades of red and pinks and blues and grays, and you're playing with the color and you're switching the color and you're adding contrast and taking away color and adding color, dodging and burning. And you're doing all this and you're so focused on this that it's skewing the way you're gonna see the final result. And that is proven to be true 99% of the time with how I process my work, where I will love it, right? I'll start processing it, I'll end and I'll go, oh my gosh, this is amazing, it's great, I'm gonna post it right now. And then the next day I'll wake up and I'll go, what was I thinking? Why, why did I add that much contrast? Why is it so dark? Why is it so bright? Um, so many things that I could have done different. And so what I normally like to do when, when people ask me, how long does it take you to, to process a photo? I normally say about a week. <laughs> and it's, it sounds crazy, but I don't literally edit the photo for a week. I, I do my processing, I edit it the way that I think it will be great. And then I'll, I'll go and grab coffee and I'll just, you know, just get my eyes away from the computer screen for two or three hours. And then I'll come back and I might say, okay, needs a little more contrast. I went a little crazy on the blues. Let's take away some of the blues and add some yellows. And then I'll, I'll go to sleep that night. I'll let it sit. I'll wake up the next day, look at it with another fresh set of eyes. Uh, okay, mm, maybe, maybe it, it needs this, maybe it needs this. And, and I'll basically just let it sit a couple days at a time until I wake up and boom, it's a masterpiece. I have no complaints. This is exactly where I want it to be. And I know that sounds crazy. This all sounds probably crazy that I'm spending so much time. It's not literally like I just pour over this photo for a week. I just always have the idea in the back of my head that, oh yeah, I need to go back and check out that photo again. And I just, I just kind of spend, you know, 10 minutes every couple days looking at it again, just looking over it to make sure it's right before I seal the deal and call it quits. Because then I know once I get it on my portfolio and once I get it on social media, I'm not gonna be in that awkward position where I'm like, oh, I wanna change it. Well, now what do I do? Do I delete the post from Instagram and repost it with 10% more saturation? You know, it's, how stupid does that sound? Uh, but it, as creative people, those little things do bother us. So those are my two biggest pieces of advice is try not to process the photo on the same day that you took the photo. Um, and then once you process it, Give yourself at least a day or a few hours at least to just get away from those colors, get away from the computer screen, come back with a fresh set of eyes, and then reprocess it to taste. And sometimes you don't need to. Sometimes it's great and you can seal the deal, export it to JPEG, and you're good to go. But a lot of the time, most of the time, when I walk away and come back, I see things that many things that I didn't see before, even if it's like a sensor dust spot. Um, since I sell prints and make prints quite often, as you saw in my last video, I can't afford to miss something because if, if I seal the deal on a photo, export it, and I'm good, and I send it out as a print, and someone tells me, hey, Eric, you know, no, not to like nitpick, but there's a really big sensor dust spot right here on the print, and it's distracting, and I don't like it. Well, I'm immediately going to feel really bad and crappy as a photographer. I'm going to refund them their money and let them keep the print and that's gonna make me feel horrible. Then I have to send them a new print without the, the dust spot. So it's gonna cost me money, it's gonna cost me time. So think about those things too. Really make sure that you love the photo before you just kind of mass release it everywhere. Um, and you don't have to do that with every photo. Obviously there's a, there's a lot of what I would say burner photos that we have that's just to get social media content out there and that's fine. But your, your landscape photos that you're really proud of that you know are gonna be really good uh, potential for, I don't know, licensing or selling or whatever, um, you know, spend the extra time on those. Just spend the extra day or a few hours to walk away and come back with a fresh set of eyes. So yeah, it's, it's perfectly fine to make changes to the photos after the fact. There's no, uh, there's no sin in that. There's no, there's not a bad practice. It's not looked down upon. Uh, it's definitely, you can definitely do that. But my, the video was more meant to, to just give you the advice that I use when I'm processing. It's what I do every time. I edit the photo for 30 minutes. I walk away, you know, come back two or three hours later maybe add a little bit more contrast, maybe take some away, go to sleep, wake up the next morning, maybe add a little bit more color, maybe take some away. Same thing, it's, it's just little bits until it gets into that zone where you just know it's perfect. And that's all this video is uh, meant to tell you, just that little tip that I use when I'm processing. It's just more of a workflow thing. If you can get used to that, uh, that's good. And if you don't wanna take that, that bit of advice, you don't have to do it. Some people's minds you know, are, are uh, just work a little different. They, they know what they want and the second they, they get it, 
you know, you're good. You don't want to think about it again. You don't want to spend that much time and that's fine. If you're one of those, those uh, people, then that's great. Then that means you're a decision maker and you don't have trouble with that. And that is awesome. <laughs> but uh, with creative people, sometimes we have a lot of, well, we will spend hours stressing and worrying over this, the hue of red. Is this hue of red too bright or, you know, too punchy? Is it too in your face? Does it need to be a little more subdued? Um, yeah. When you print, it gets even worse. The shades of red that come out might be like, you know, a, a half a, a half a shade off from the computer screen and then I'll have to scrap it and make a reprint. I've got to have a perfectionist with that stuff. So anyway, there's my tip. Uh, hope you guys got something out of this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.